every photo is like a drive-by. I've probably flown 200 times in South Louisiana. And how many good pictures do you think you have? 20. How many decent ones do you think you have? 50. On the website, it was saying this belt is usually used on treadmills. The pipe to the carburetor is some sort of vacuum cleaner assembly. I first saw South Louisiana from the air flying in and out of New Orleans on commercial flights. It's an infinitely complex ecosystem. What I really wanted to do was just go up in the air and explore. So were you thinking sail to the same campsite or somewhere else so that you get closer to the next island? I kind of want to fly to this other island. That's going to be four miles, like six miles, eight miles. Either way. My mom's texting me. I was always intrigued by the barrier islands. It's an interesting landscape that I wanted to fly and photograph. We bought this sailboat in an effort to use less gasoline. People used to use this kind of boat 100 years ago in Louisiana for oystering and fishing. So we thought it would be a smart move to use that to get around out here. In an ideal world, my paramotor wouldn't burn any gasoline, but this is the most efficient way for me to get up in the air and fly around until I stop flying around and just sail the rest of my life. We should go wander around and look for dead things on the beach. Tonight is bushes, grilling beans, and a can of green beans, and it should be delicious. My neighbor is a scrapper and scraps aluminum and often finds canned food, the food that he doesn't want, he gives to me. So I've got a whole bag of canned food over here. These barrier islands are eroding at rates of something like up to 60 feet per year. When you look at the maps, it's just a thin beach line, but in reality, you can see where they've been rebuilding the beaches all throughout this area to try to preserve this bit of life for a little longer. The reason I started working on this project was essentially environmental communication. I think these images can be used by the scientific community to kind of raise awareness about how this landscape works. Great flight the other day, that was cool. Yeah. A lot of my work has yeah. been down here. For me as a scientist, I very closely link education and research. Part of research is to educate people. I collaborate with some folks from NASA, and they can calculate a vegetation index, how much vegetation is there. But 
One of the problems with satellites is you don't really know exactly what they're looking at, whether it's algae or whether it's marsh grasses. Yeah, I mean, from 50 feet up, you can tell what type of vegetation it is exactly. And right, in a way that would be much more precise than you could get from an airplane. South Louisiana feels like you're in some kind of remote wilderness until you get up in the air and then you can see that you're just surrounded by miles and miles of oyster leases, shrimpers trawling. The horizon is just dotted with endless oil rigs. Everything is exploited in one way or another. Everywhere you look, you see these oil and gas pipeline canals. Those canals are what allowed saltwater intrusion to penetrate so far north and then killed the vegetation which was holding the soil in place. And then that's what really triggered most of the wetland loss. Deep in the woods lies the shadowlands where brother bear is weeping his deepest lament. I've met old people down in this area that tell me this used to be meadow where they grazed cattle. And now it's just open water with the edges of the canals remaining. When I started this project, I had in my mind a handful of images that would tell the story of wetland loss. And then experiencing this place drew me in and kept me exploring. It's really become a process of going out and looking for like magic. Love New Orleans, but try to be realistic about living here. You know, one major hurricane without that protection of the wetlands, we'll all be finding a new place to live. much value in this ecosystem. Hopefully I'm able to capture a little bit of that with my photographs and kind of make people think about this place a little more. When I'm flying, I often have this feeling of overwhelming beauty with this like deep sadness for what's been lost. Two feelings at the same time constantly. 